Exactly One, and he was also a part of the Black Liberation Army. And we interviewed him, and we talked about everything from politics, the state of Black America, to stealth revisionists. Uh, so that was our last uh, episode. Whoa. And also, you can catch another episode with Professor Ed Garns and myself, where we talked about um, 21st century uh, educational racism. And then there, but prior to that, I did a podcast. I held it down myself. And that one was called the uh, Higher Education Cartel. So yeah, we, we we definitely we definitely bring the truth and, and we letting the chips fall where it may. And um, our, our podcast is, is grown by leaps and bounds. So definitely check us out. You know, now, and, and different uh, platforms. The good thing is a lot of us in here are on Spreaker. I actually record here on Spreaker, and you actually have your podcast on Spreaker. So. What do we need to look for? Like, what's your, uh, what's the podcast name or the or the uh, username for us to go follow? Uh, necessary blackness. Okay, necessary blackness on Spreaker. Be sure to check that out, y'all. Necessary blackness on Spreaker. I know we got a room of people here who actually uh, uh, are still with us listening, and we got a, quite a few that ain't even in the chat room. I can see that's still streaming, but definitely check it out. Necessary blackness on Spreaker, also on iTunes. And, and, and one of one of the things, you know, um, let everybody know, forewarn y'all, is that we unapologetic. <laughs> so <laughs> if 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 you um if you don't believe in the unification of all Africans, then this might not be this might not be the podcast for you. You know. And I, and I take out a lot of podcasts. Like, I take out y'all podcasts. I love it. There's a lot of different podcasts that I listen to. But if, if someone is just coming for that, under, you know, unadulterated truth, yep. like, we're we not sugarcoating it. It ain't going to never be anybody on there that don't possess uh, type 3 or melanin. I hear you. <laughs> you know, cause certain things we we, we, we got to have ourselves. Right, right. You know, and, right. And, and that's it. You know, it's closed to everybody else. This is for us, not us. All right, brother. That's not to say that I won't do something in the future with other, with other individuals, other people, but this right here, yeah, this is for us. This is a platform for us to, to be able to disseminate information that ain't going to be alternative facts. <laughs> you know, this is yep. the truth. So you got, y'all got any more questions? Anybody call me? Uh, and they, we, we got people in here. They, they in and they, they got one ear on, on looking at the NFL draft, man. Unfortunately, half my listeners is, is uh, sports guys too. <laughs> So they they oh, both doing man. a mixture of both here, man. We got my man Big Are L. They, huh? Yeah, they into the sports. Yeah, they being they they looking at who in draft. I guess it's tonight tonight is the NFL draft. Oh, yeah. Yep. So yeah, they, they get, read that book, forty million dollars play. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you dropping the man? That's heavy, man. That's heavy on the man. That's heavy on. The you read you read that book? The forty million dollars play? No. Yeah. It sounds like it's a cool one, though. Yeah, I, I, read, I read a little bit of it. I didn't get the picture. What's the sister's name? Marquisha? Mar- yeah, that's Marquisha. Yeah, Marquisha. Yeah, have you read the book? I have not. Nope. No. You gotta I read that book. That's what I was about to say. I, I need a few book, good books to read right about now. Yeah. yeah I just finished off. Um, I just read this reading Black Privilege by um, Charlemagne. Oh, okay. He was out here in LA um, doing the signing on that. Wow. Yeah, he was out there. In, he was out there in the Grove. Yeah, I, I just mm-hmm. finished reading that, and um, now I'm reading uh, this is Zaza Ali's book. This is part two, Black Matters, Plague the Dysfunction. This is volume two. Wow. Yeah, it's another good book. 
that that's I, you know, I say, man, you always gotta, gotta, you got to, expand, man, expand and read the mind. Like my my library over here is like serious. <laughs> my man, my man, Big Al said he just wanted to light your Sprigger page. So he said, yeah, okay. he, he said he hundred percent bro black. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Necessary blackness. You definitely want to check that out. Shout out to my man Doug Stewart who's providing this platform. WSME. Um, radio.com He's actually the, the executive producer Of this WSME network One half of the two live stews um, But yeah man I appreciate you Raheem for, for, for definitely spending time with us man Dropping that knowledge Dropping them gems on us And uh, you know what I'm saying Allowing us to be able to um, You know what I'm saying uh, um, Check into the and discover this documentary and hopefully folks will go out and you know what I'm saying get this documentary uh, going to the elementary genocide.com website and support the brother for this third project that's coming up we got five days left to um, lend support we appreciate you brother for spending time and coming through alright and I definitely appreciate you for having me and I have an open line anytime you want to reach out brother you know, it's got my number, and as soon as three is available, I'm definitely going to um, make sure, you, you know, you're in the system to get a copy of it. And in closing, I, I just want to tell everybody my closing words is that we got to continue to fight the fight. And, um, you know, everybody, you know, everybody's not going to be a warrior. You know, so I, I don't expect everybody to be on the front line. But one thing that you can do is you can speak. <laughs> if you if you don't have it in you, the fortitude, the fight, you can speak, and you and you have to speak out. You know, and you have to speak out and fight against racism and white supremacy. Because right now, that's where it's at with us as as melanated people. You know. Um, Martin Luther King, he said there are three ways people overcome their oppression, and that is one, violent uprising, two, to surrender, and three, passive aggression. But there's a fourth one that he failed to mention that Elijah Muhammad talked heavily about, and that's complete and total separation. And um, Elijah Muhammad, Separation is better than prayer. So you got to think about that. You know, sometimes we have to come to our own conclusion uh -huh. and use common sense that we got to separate from our open enemy and educate our own. And with that, I'm going to say peace, free the land, and free them all. Hey, we had, we had one guy. We had one guy call in, man. Just call in at the same time. Okay. <laughs> man, Chief Rocker, what's good, brother? Guess who stepped in the room? Uh, <laughs> What's good with you, bro? What's going on, bro? With Raheem? Yep. What's going on, Black Man Peace? Yeah, peace to you, my brother. Uh, listen, I uh, was talking about uh, a couple of things that, um, you know, it, it caught me as far as um, us as um, people out here and trying to make a difference, right? Uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, you know, like in our little podcast chat rooms always talking about how pro black they is, how this and that they is. But I've never seen nobody step to the front floor and say what we really need to do. Right? So I just want you to say to me, am I right or wrong about what I'm about to say? First mm -hmm. and foremost, I think where it all starts at is we need to take our neighborhoods back over so that we can educate our young kids instead of them running a loop because there's too many um, young mothers out here that's not raising the smell out here the right way. Like, I'm, a, I'm from a single parent. My mother, I'm, I'm the only child. I was a boy, and she made sure that I didn't step out of my ground so I could become a man. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of them out here today is ruling their mother. You know, they're not respecting home, and they're not respecting the streets as far as other people on the street. I remember the time where your neighbor used to can beat you, and you come home, and you get a beating by your mother and father for not doing the right thing. So all that we lost, we're not trying to gain back. We're not trying to take back our neighborhood so that, you know, because see, for first and foremost, the race is going down due to the fact that we have too much hate, 
we rather hit each other than go out there and hit the man that's keeping us down, you know what I'm saying? Other nationalities that's really keeping us down, you know what I'm saying? Look at all the people that's ahead of us. We went from used to be number two to where we at now. I don't even know where we at on the chart, you know what I'm saying? We slowly disappearing. But see, if we don't get uh, a, a good speaker that can bring us back together, if it takes, for instance, when these black guys are getting killed in these different states, why are we marching in Atlanta? Why not everybody go from each state to where it happened at? Bring five to six million people there. Could that city handle that situation? National Guard can even handle five to six million people. That's how you make a stand. But we don't, we don't have that education. Nobody's thinking. We're just going down here doing the wrong way. So what you say about that, my brother? Um, I definitely agree with you wholeheartedly when you were saying about us not having unity. You know, Marcus Garvey, he said that we are a race of people that's cursed by petty differences, and until we overcome those differences, we're going to be in the same position. As far yeah. as taking back our neighborhood, absolutely, 100%. And what I tell when I go out and I speak to parents and at these schools, I tell each parent what they need to do is be more proactive and the Parents Teachers Association. You need to attend those, those meetings. You need to start electing from amongst your peers who's right. going to be on the school board. Because what happens is the school board uh, elects who the superintendent going to be. The superintendent is the one that hires the principals in the locales of those schools. So it starts with... The, the, the parents teachers associate each other and getting them on the school board and that's how you do it from neighborhood to neighborhood and, and you start off small and that's right. how you take com take back control of your school because anytime you have where you predominantly well, let's look at Ferguson Ferguson over 79 percent black there was right. only one black individual that was on the school board so here it is, you have other people from other ethnic groups making decisions on what curriculum, what standardized test is going to be taught to your child. You know, and, and what's so messed up about Ferguson, and I talked about this on my podcast, they just had an election and the sister lost by 500 votes to the same mayor, last mayor, that was the mayor when Michael Brown got killed. And this mayor said that there was no racist problem and Mike Brown had nothing to do with race. Do you know black people voted him back in? Now, wow. What's so sad about that is I remember when that situation happened, and I'm talking about there were social justice warriors, activists, civil rights leaders from all over the country descending down in the ponds in Ferguson and he was teaching political awareness classes. They were getting everybody to get up and, and register to vote, and register to vote. But what happened is, my attention span, who was that, two, three years ago? And everybody done forgot, and nobody voted in this local election. If everybody right. that was out there riding in that street when that situation happened went and voted for this sister, she would be in office right now. But now they got to deal with this, the same Neanderthal. You know, they didn't care about you in the first place. That all the national guards out there, y'all got him back in office. So, right. you know, yo, it, 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 yo, it, it, it's crazy, man, how, how we do right. it up by five percent votes. Like, and this is 79% of predominantly black services. Yeah, you know, you know um, they say They say less than 2,500 people actually vote in the uh, mayor election. It's a small town, you know what I mean? But, right. like, anybody that was of age went out there and fought. And I think, you know, what should have been done, you know, them same individuals that went down there the first time went back down there, but I guess since there wasn't no cameras down there, you know, nobody wanted to show up. But what, what should have been done, because I probably know the situation what happened. You know, you got individuals that, believe it or not, it might sound free to us, but they didn't make it out to vote because they didn't have car fare. They couldn't get there. 
you know, you got 